Oh, I know that sound. It's time for the beer and news report. Hi, and welcome to the beer news report. Cheers. Today I'm drinking Taj Mahal Premium Lager Beer. This is by United Breweries. I got the big bottle because this is really good. It's clean, it's crisp. I'm telling you, if you like lagers, this is the beer for you. So all you lager drinkers, cheers. And this is the in-between show while I wait for the votes to come in for my highlight show. When I go back to Vermont, family and friends always ask me, hey, what is it like to live in San Jose? Or, to a larger extent, Silicon Valley. So that's what this show is going to be about. Life in Silicon Valley. I hope you like geography and statistics because this one's got tons of it. So sit back, relax, pop open a beer, and let's learn about Silicon Valley. Cheers. This is the Bay Area. It's made up of five regions. The North Bay, the East Bay, the South Bay, the Peninsula, and San Francisco. The Bay Area is roughly 2,000 square miles, and the population is over 3 million people. There's over 1.5 million jobs with an average annual salary of over $150,000. We have a net foreign immigration of over 16,000 people and a net domestic migration of minus 29,000 people for a total net migration of minus 13,000 people. This is where Silicon Valley is. San Francisco holds a lot of startups and internet companies. Most of the data I got for this show is from a seminar I watched called The Future of Housing in Silicon Valley. And the person giving all this data was Rachel Massaro from the Joint Venture Silicon Valley Company. As you can see from this chart, Silicon Valley still holds the most jobs and the most talent with strong growth. Here we see that even though Silicon Valley is only 1% of the state's land and 8% of the state's population, it commands a significant share of the economic drivers. This includes IPOs, patents, venture capital, and high-valued companies called unicorns and decacorns. What's a decacorn? Well, a unicorn is a private company worth $1 billion. Deca is Greek for 10, and for instance, a decameter is 10 meters. So a decacorn is a private company worth $10 billion. There are 15 decacorns in the U.S., of that, seven are in San Francisco and two are in Silicon Valley, as shown in the boxes on the lower right. This chart shows the effects of the coronavirus on business. In the initial decline between February and March, all markets declined. But in six months after that, they rebounded and Silicon Valley market outperformed all other sectors. As you can see from the chart on the right, that by the end of 2020, we were significantly above where we were before the coronavirus hit. This leads to strong growth in office space as well as other commercial development. The effect is that high-tech salaries increased dramatically, whereas non-tech salaries did not keep pace. You can see this by the green and purple lines on this chart on the left representing high income salaries. This then leads to larger income inequality as shown in the chart on the right. So with all this money going around, what does that do to property values? Well, here's a comparison slide showing that if you bought a house in Silicon Valley in the 50s or the 60s, you could have gotten it for less than $10,000. And this would be a brand new house ready for you to move in. Nowadays, this house here sold for $1.7 million and is unsafe to enter. Basically, the buyer is paying for the land and the house will have to be torn down. To be clear, Palo Alto is more expensive than San Jose, but still, that's a lot of money. You know, if that house wasn't there, the seller probably could have got $2 million for the land. With the cost of land so high, we can see from this chart that more houses are being built on one acre of land. That makes sense. To get around the high cost of land, you increase the housing density. The chart on the right is showing housing being built near transit stations. This is increasing because commute times to work is a major factor when buying a house. Here you see the medium home sales price in Silicon Valley, San Francisco, and all of California. The prices of the houses have increased dramatically. The small chart on the right shows that the one and two million dollar house range is increasing while the sub one million houses are decreasing. With this chart I want to focus on the top line which is representative of the Bay Area. From 2012 to 2018 the price of homes has doubled. That means that the ratio of home price to your income has gone up. The next column shows that not enough houses are being built to keep up with the jobs. So people have to live farther out in the Bay Area, which increases their commute time. The good news is rent and mortgage isn't that bad of a burden as long as you're getting a house. That's the hard part. Here we have the medium home value estimates 
And I want you to focus on the two yellow lines because that's representative of Silicon Valley. As you can see, for Silicon Valley, the home range is between $1.3 and $1.4 million. So a 20% down payment ranges between $250,000 to $300,000. But the median household income ranges between $130,000 and $150,000. So when you compare the down payment to the income, it's about twice. So that's making it very hard for one single person to buy a house. So let's say that you're a married couple with a family and you're trying to buy a house, but you have to factor in childcare, which in Silicon Valley is the highest in all of California and probably all of the United States. But considering all those factors, let's say you still bought a house. Then the pandemic hit. Now you have all those costs and the risk of being evicted. These charts show the amount of houses that are possibly being evicted. The top green line is the renters and the bottom line is the homeowners. It's in the hundreds of thousands. Here the population pyramid is showing how Silicon Valley is getting older over time. The upper right hand graph is also showing the components of population change. As you can see, immigrants are moving in as the locals are moving out. The lower graph shows more effects on population as we are not having as many babies as in the past. They should take a class on having babies from my niece. <laughs> Anyways, where are the people coming from if not from babies? It's immigrants. This chart shows the percentage of population that is foreign born. We are at the highest level in over 100 years. This leads to multi-generational households, whether that be from foreign culture or from young adults living with their parents. Here the chart compares Silicon Valley, San Francisco, California, and the United States with household by income range. In the United States, you can get a house if you're making about $50,000 or more. For California, you need to make about $100,000 or more. And then there's Silicon Valley and San Francisco. Basically, you need to make $200,000 or more to get a house. Now, there are requirements that developers have to follow when building houses, which includes a certain percentage has to be at the affordable level. But as you can see from this chart, that it's mainly in the above moderate income range, not so much in the low to very low income range. This chart shows the newly approved residential units to be built. The good news is, we are building more affordable housing. But if you remember from the previous chart that most of the affordable housing is in the above moderate income range. Out of the 2,446 units being built in 2020, only 703 are for the very low income people. So what is very low income for Silicon Valley? Well, for a family, that means mom and dad are working and each person is making $21 an hour or less. For a single person, it's $30 an hour or less. Now for Silicon Valley, that qualifies you to be very low income. This chart shows that for South Bay, which includes San Jose, that's where I live, most of the cities show people leaving. That was for the year between 2019 and 2020. For San Jose, almost 13,000 people left. Now my hometown is Barry, Vermont, and it has a population of 10,000 people. So the entire city of Barry, Vermont has moved out of San Jose in just one year. I just wanted to give a local home reference. In 2018, Redfin did a survey of the hottest neighborhoods in the United States. All of them were in Silicon Valley. Now, you move forward to 2021, and none of the hottest neighborhoods are in Silicon Valley. Hey, a note to friends and family back in Vermont. If you look at the number two spot, it is Chester slash Andover, Vermont. Good job, you guys. Again, back in 2018, Zillow did a survey of the hottest markets for housing. And San Jose was number one, with San Francisco being number five. Move forward to 2021, and there's a Sunbelt surge, with all of the hottest spots being in the south, represented by the yellow dots. The blue dots are where housing is cooling, and San Francisco is number two. Now, I said in a previous show, one of the reasons people are leaving California is because they're retiring to low-income tax states, like Texas and Florida. So I don't believe it's 100% the cost of housing that's driving people out of California and the Bay Area. But there's a lot of great things in San Jose, like the San Jose Sharks, or the Tech Museum, or the Winchester Mystery House, or the San Jose Sharks, or San Pedro Square, and then there's Santana Row. But best of all, there's the Beer and News Report. I mean, what more do you need? Well, what did you think? Are you ready to move out to Silicon Valley? Surely you don't want to retire here as it's really expensive. But if you're an engineer and you're just starting out and you want to get cutting edge experience, uh, there's no better place. You got to come to Silicon Valley. Cheers. Well, as you can see, my beer is almost empty. It's right at the end of the show. If you want to contact me, you can reach me at this email. Otherwise, click that like button and subscribe and hit that little bell so you know when I put out a new show. And as always, 
Keep your beer cold and your intros hot. Cheers.